What is the degree and leading coefficient of the given polynomial x squared times 2x minus 3 squared? All right, so the first thing is, in order for me to figure out the degree and the leading coefficient, I kind of have to get this thing into like a polynomial form. And what I mean by that is a form that kind of looks like this, where your function, or whatever equation you're given, should look something like this, where you have a term here, plus a term here, plus a term there, plus a term there, plus a term there, you know, dot, dot, dot. You can have only one of them, you could have two, you could have three, you could have four, you could have five, you could have eight million terms, it doesn't matter, right? You can have the number just less than infinity, whatever that number is. Um, but it has to be in this kind of form. Now, if you notice, it, this is not in that form. This would almost be like saying something like a times then b minus c, all right? right this is the b, that's the c, right? This is the a. It, it, this does not follow this form. But I can get it into something like this if I can figure out how to distribute, oh, right? Distribute maybe some terms or I got to square some terms, right? This is also squared, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is start to, you know, uh, uh, simplify this more or less, okay? Or expand on it. That might be a better word. It's expand on it. Um, now, the first step is, right, you would work inside the parentheses, right, PEMDAS, uh, but there's nothing to do, right? You cannot subtract those terms. The next thing to do is to then work with the exponents. Uh, the exponent here on x, there's nothing you can do with it. It's just x squared. Uh, but there is something you can do with uh, this term that is being squared. All right. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, I'm going to write this out twice. Okay. So there's going to be 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3, right? Because that's what it basically means to be squared. Okay. Let me move this over a little bit. Now you might look at this and say, oh, 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 I know what to do, right? We can now begin to FOIL. So we're going to take the first multiply or the first of the first and multiply it by the first of the second right term. So we take the 2x, multiply it by the 2x, and that's going to be then a 4x squared. Then we're going to take the 2x and multiply it by the negative 3, and that's going to become negative 3x. Uh, excuse me, what? 6x. Oh boy. Uh, then the, uh, you're like, am I, am I really learning from this guy? Um, yeah, yeah, you are. Um, so here, negative 3, uh, or maybe I should be learning from you. Um, negative 3, uh, then multiplied by the positive 2x, right? That should be then a negative 6x. Last but not least, negative 3 multiplied by the negative 3 should be a positive 9, okay? So that was all factored uh, nicely there, or expanded nicely. Who knows the right terms? I don't really care. Um, and what we're going to do is just kind of, you know, combine any like terms now inside that parenthesis just to make our life easier. So that's gonna be four X squared minus than 12 X plus than nine, okay? Now, I'm very close. If you notice, now I have these like three distinct terms without a power, so that's starting to look very close to this, but I still have this pesky X squared on the outside. No big deal, no big deal, right? Let's just now f distribute this to each term, okay? So multiply the x squared by the 4x squared. That should be then 4x to the fourth. Then x squared times the negative 12x. That should be then negative 12x to the third. And then take the x squared, multiply it by a positive 9. That should be plus 9x squared. And voila. This is now in a nice form of something that looks remotely like this. Okay? Where we have this is like our a minus then this is our b plus then this is our c. Okay, and by the way, you know, I only use pluses up here, but that doesn't make a difference. It could be plus or minus. All right. Now, finally, to find the degree, okay, to find the degree, we need to find the highest, the highest power of your variable. In this problem, the variable is x. So just look at every term, okay, and actually first, maybe what we'll do is highlight every term distinctly. Here's one term. Include the sign with all the terms. Okay, so all those three terms are highlighted now distinctly. So which term has the highest value of the power of the variable? This one, right? And that highest power is your degree. That's it. So this is the fourth degree. Okay, four, fourth degree or just degree four. Cool. Next now, box that in. Okay, because that's what you're going to be working with. Now we have to find our leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient is always the coefficient, or the number that precedes the variable, in your highest power. 
term. So that's why I told you to box it. So the coefficient here is just going to be a 4. You don't have to write plus 4, though you can, right? It's implied that there's a positive there, okay? But it's basically just simply 4, okay? That would be the leading coefficient. The co and the coefficient of this term would be a negative 12, and the coefficient here would be positive 9, all right? But the leading coefficient for this problem is 4, and is a fourth degree. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do hope that helped. Please help us out by subscribing and liking. I'll see you in the next problem. Be well.